okay what's up everybody it's me erica we are down here girl girl girl, 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 girl. okay let's talk about what's on the blog since we don't have nothing to talk about is i sponsored the now yes. i sponsored the Let blog me tell you something. so that's where we typically go if you're new here shout out to you um thank you for subscribing don't forget to like the video on your way in if you haven't yet okay please it helps people know like oh i want somebody else to see this it helps with the algorithm girl so hook your girl up you know what i'm saying so we just finished talking about the met gala we went through all of that i told you which ones i like i didn't see everybody i didn't see rihanna i didn't want to um let me go to um because when when i start looking queen latifah i like the um because uh, birds of paradise is one of my favorite flowers so i love that she had birds of paradise on um her dress but let me see did rihanna go to the met gala doesn't she have some newborns re 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 now it's digitally altered images Rihanna skips the 2024 Met Gala after coming down with the flu because everybody was looking for her. Well, Zendaya, Zendaya held it down. She did. We're going to give Zendaya that. She really held it down. I, I feel like she held it down for... Um, um rihanna you got it girl you got it girl okay so let's talk about what's on the blogs girl all right so let's go to the compromise jasmine brand no actually let's go to hollywood unlocked all right so lala anthony praise for her hosting skills at the met gala you know she's good at stuff she's good at communications you know lala was on the radio she was on the radio in los angeles on 92.3 to beat i remember she she came to la to be on the radio for a little while and then she was in the rate on the radio somewhere else as well yeah ludicrous ass was on the radio too y'all know that they people the folks used to be on the radio they good at communication so i'm i'm not surprised that she did well um look at the smith children getting ready all right police launch investigation outside of drake's home following overnight shooting nearby one man injured breaking news okay more breaking news this morning here on cb24 breakfast this from the bridal path area where a police investigation is underway at drake's home chopper 24 is above the scene this morning it shows the street shut down just outside of 21 park lane circle that property belongs to the rapper. Crime scene tape can not only be seen outside, but also in the front courtyard driveway of Drake's home. It's not clear at this point what the nature of the investigation is. It's also unclear if this is connected to an overnight shooting that police have told us about in the uh, area where shots rang out. This is in the Bayview and Lawrence Avenue area, which is in the sort of general area of Drake's home. So this was just after two o'clock this morning. In this case, one person taken to hospital with serious injuries. Investigators say the suspects left the area in a vehicle. Once again, no official word from police if there is a connection. We are working on that. We have our Courtney Hills making her way now to the scene. Again, Drake's home. Police investigating will have much more throughout the morning mm -hmm. here. Okay, more breaking news this morning. This is literally the picture, the same picture that's on the cover of um, Not Like Us. They Not Like Us. They Not Like Us. They Not Like Us. Cardi B and Offset were at a Met Gala party, after party, I guess. Cardi B looks nice. She always looks nice. Whoever is Cardi B stylist always is chef's kiss. They do a wonderful job when she steps out in her videos. Ten different looks and my looks all kill. She ain't never lied about that. Whoever wrote that, they ain't never lied. That's no shade. <laughs> they ain't never lied. Uh oh. Aaron Hernandez's fiance condemns Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, and more for joking about the NFL player's suicide death at the at a roast. 
Victory at tight ends was pretty low back then. Block, catch, don't murder. I'm sorry, Randy. Why don't you have a ring? What the hell, man? You're one of the best ever. Drew Bledsoe has a ring. Aaron Hernandez had a ring around his neck. Like, what's going on? Tom is afraid of the Giants, which is why Kevin Hart is hosting tonight. It's true. All night, he's been using the stool that Aaron Hernandez kicked out from under himself. Everyone always asks me how big Gronk's dick is. Now, don't get me wrong. It gets the job done. But there was this other Patriots tight end. Now, he was hung. Bar for Patriot tight ends was pretty low back then. Block, catch, don't murder. Damn. The, the murdering part jokes, okay, maybe, but the suicide jokes, I don't know. What y'all think? But that was a lot. That even shocked me. They kicked the chair from underneath him. God damn. This is not his roses. Wasn't it Tom Brady's roast? And then they said that Giselle Boonchin come out, came out and said she didn't appreciate the joke. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. First and foremost, this is a roast. The level of sensitivity and cultural awareness and political correctness is abandoned in a roast, period, in the story. I'm moving on. I just, I can't. I can't. I get it. I get that we want to be sensitive because the sensitivity allows us to be aware. But there are spaces for roast. It's a roast. It's a roast. I can't even, I'm not going to even, because because I get it, but no, there are just some spaces that have to be, the The integrity of the art form has to be maintained. I'm, I just, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. It's a roast. It's a roast. It's not supposed to be sensitive. It's not supposed to be politically correct. It's not supposed to even be nice. It's a roast. It is going, it's supposed to make you cringe, but the kicking off the chair joke, I, that was a little bit too much for me, but I'm not going to say that the art form or anything needs to be modified. Leave it alone. Y'all already fuck with the comedians. We get on the comedians. Y'all be recording comedians, not allowing them to like even work their fucking jokes, recording them, posting them online, not allowing them even the privacy to work out their jokes at all. And then y'all, if you don't like plenty of times, comedians can tell you people get up and walk out of their shows um, there's a comedian. I can't remember his name. The bald, the little short white bald dude. Oh God. I can't remember his name. He, um, says if you're not offending half of your audience, you're not, it's not, you're not doing it right. Half of the audience should be laughing and the other half should be offended by the joke. But we're taking our sensitivity while we do honor sensitivity. We're taking our sensitivity into spaces where we know that the jokes can be off color. The jokes can, you know, and I think, you know, when it comes to like, cause Dave Chappelle is one of my favorite comedians, but his focus on trans women is losing me. I can't do it. I cannot, I can't, it's not resonating. It's not funny. You're, it's like, and it's almost like, and it's no pun. It's almost like you have a hard on for a group of people that it's it's um in your it's like monique it's like monique with motherfucking tyler and oprah it's become a part of well for dave he knows how to put it with you know he'll make a joke but the way that he jokes his jokes tend to it, it he'll start from the beginning and then he'll end the show with the punchline from the joke from the beginning right he does it a lot He'll start off a story and then he won't quite finish it until the end of his set. That's just how he does it. But his focus on trans women and this is the conversation about trans girl. No, mm -mm, it's getting old. I heard Cat Williams special on Netflix. 
was not good. I haven't watched it yet. I have not watched it, but I know his last Netflix special was not good. I was like, girl, these jokes are old. They're outdated. All you niggas need to update your operating system on some real shit. The jokes that you want to like, though, that kind of like where you're focused on something that's different than a roast. A roast is meant and roasts have been going on since before I was born. They've been roasting people. So, and, and you're supposed to get up and say some really mean things about them and smile and laugh about it. People get up and walk out of comedy shows all the time. You can get up and walk out. To me, I feel like you don't change, don't change the environment. Get up and leave. That's how I feel. Don't ask them to change. Get your ass up and leave. If that's not the, if it's not resonating with you, get up and leave. That's the theme, I guess. Get up and leave. But I'm not going to, I cannot, I don't know why I'm not going to sit here and critique a roast because I, that's just like, it doesn't, that doesn't, that's not how it goes. And to me, it's not, to me, it's not harm. It's not harming anyone. It's a roast. We're making jokes and they're supposed to be off color and inappropriate, completely and grossly inappropriate. That's how roasts go. Go back and watch the old Dean Martin roast there. It's not, it's like they really digging. They're roasting you. They put your ass on a motherfucking skewer and turn that shit. They do. They do. And that's, and that's how I felt like I felt funny trying to like, trying to apply this level of sensitivity in a space where it doesn't belong. I can't even apply it there. It didn't even feel right. So like, to me, I was shocked by the joke. I mean, you saw my real live reaction. I'm shocked, but I'm not going to be like, that's not right. You know what I mean? I know how it feels for the people, um, that it's happening to. And that's why a lot of those kind of, um, 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 or spaces were private. They weren't a lot. You, you didn't, you didn't hear too much about you. Like you saw some jokes from a roast, but you didn't get the whole roast because it was really a private affair. You know what I mean? Go watch old Dean Martin roast. That's before my time. Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all of them up there drunk as hell, high as hell. Cracking jokes, laughing, cracking jokes. Lucille Ball used to be up there cracking jokes on them. Go watch them old roles. They are not, and it, it's not, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed in a thousand years. I mean, and like for some things, we want them to change in a thousand years. But just for some things, we have to maintain the integrity of the art form. Please, please. Anyways, I don't know how I got on that, but that's what it is. Marlon Wayans talks grief, losing nearly 60 people in three years. And again, how his late mother is the reason he never got married. Why does he keep telling this story? Why does he keep telling the story on why he never got married? Okay, fine. Girl. Marlon Wayans says he's never been married because he always wanted his mom to be his number one girl. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I have to remember too, I cannot even like, I feel like if you're a person who wants to live your life as such, then we can judge you based on you not living your life as such, right? If you say you want to be a person who wants to do this, this, and this, and then just live your life as such. But if you're a person who says, I don't want this and I, I cannot judge these people like he didn't want to get married. Okay, fine. He didn't want to get married. Big whoopee fucking deal. Right? Even though I know the people that he's had children with may have possibly wanted to be married to him. Maybe, maybe there might have been a, one, a, a few or one or two that did not want to get married to him. Like Jalen Green, Andrea. He just had a baby. I think he has two. Now Dre is going to be the next baby mama. I'm not going to even judge the idea and even stigmatize her being a baby mama. She does. She said in an interview, her goddamn self that she didn't want a relationship. She don't want to get married. She doesn't want to get married. Has anybody ever thought and wrapped their head around the possibility that these women are having children with Jalen Green, not to be in a relationship with him, but to duplicate his DNA and have him mock take care of the child financially, they have no desire to be married. 
it's the women who desire to be married and who are being not picked. That's a difference. And I think a lot of women want children and then you, they go through the whole, cause you know, they want children. Women want some women want children. There's some women who don't shout out to the girls who are single and no dependents. Shout out to y'all. I might make y'all a shirt that says single, no dependent. Don't steal my fucking idea. Okay. Anyways, I'm here for that. If you want to have a baby, but we live in a society that tells a woman, if you want to have a baby, you got to legally attach yourself to some motherfucking man and then give, and then take that man's last name and give your child that man's last name. No, if you want a baby, goddamn it, go have you a goddamn baby. Go have you a little fat, chunky, nosy baby if that's what you want. Nobody should even stigmatize you being a solo parent there are so many family dynamics and how things look so me being over here like marlon wayans because see there's two things happening there is a this traditional idea that marriage whatever blah 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 and whatever the hell hell else and there are literally people that are still judging a person's dynamics based on what they would want their lives to be not that not that it's beneficial because we have documents and records and historical evidence and statistics that show it's not beneficial for a certain group of people for another group of people in that situation it's beneficial for them but not for the other party in the situation but you want to have a child a child so you do all the things because i was getting ready to say marlon wayans you know wanting your mom to be your main girl fine that's why you never wanted to get married shut up just just say you never wanted to get married that's what i said all that to say shut up and just say you never wanted to get married don't fucking scapegoat your mama nigga you didn't you just say i didn't want to get married i live in a society that expected me to get married and god damn it i don't want to get married and I'm not going to even use the excuse that I wanted my mom to be my main girl because, nigga, that sounds crazy as fuck. I didn't want to be married, goddammit, but I wanted children. And I know a good way. I know that I don't have to accomplish nothing in life, but I can get a woman to duplicate my DNA and give the motherfucker my last name. And I ain't got to do shit. So, goddammit, yeah, I want some of that. I want a piece of that because I'm living in survival mode, goddamn. I didn't want to be married. Shit. I think more people need to just cut the fucking bullshit out. A lot of people don't want to be married. They don't want to have children. They don't want to be in relationships. Some people want to have children and do not want to be in a relationship. Look at Lala Kent down there to the Vanderpump rules. She intentionally went down to a sperm bank because she does not want to go back and forth with a motherfucker using her child as a tool in a custody goddamn battle. And I don't fucking blame her. If you go listen to the way we never were, you would feel better about desiring the things that traditionally would tell you that you need to attach yourself to a man to do. But you don't have to do that, goddamn. If you want a baby, have a baby. Get your community together. Get your get your tribe together. Have your baby. She had all her, the people come and they had like a baby shower type of thing where they were helping her pick the donor and stuff like that. I'm sure it was just for fun. I hope you made the decision on your own and no, nobody else's decision or opinion went into you choosing the sperm for your baby. Jalen Green, you're a sperm bank. These niggas are sperm banks. They're creating broken homes. Fuck them niggas. The homes will be broken if they were there. Haven't you ever thought about that? Haven't you ever thought about the broken homes where there's two parents in the fucking home and the home is broke up? Have you ever thought about that? There's a picture going around of a of a of a ad and the man says, "You notice anything different?" On the top of the ad, it's an ad for a photo going to get pictures taken. Come use our photo studio. Top of the ad is a black woman with two children taking a picture with her babies. On the bottom of the ad is a white woman with her husband and two children. The man says, have you noticed, did you notice anything different about this photo? I said, do y'all see something strange about this picture? Is there anything strange about this picture? Matter of fact, just comment, I see it.
when you when you see it. Just comment. I see it when you see it. Yes, God damn it. The woman at the top has two children, and the woman at the bottom tells everybody she has three. Shit. The woman at the top is probably stress free. The woman at the bottom is probably stressed the fuck out. She's probably a goddamn maid, a mule, and a fucking mattress, and a mom. The woman on the bottom is probably tired as hell of managing the home. And this motherfucker sitting there not doing anything. God damn it. I'd rather be, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather not have help than somebody there and not help. Do you know how fucking retarded that, excuse me. Do you know how ridiculous that is? And somehow, oh yes, a single black mother. Good. She got her fucking edges. Look at her edges. She looks moisturized, honey. She looks, she looks alive. She looks alert. The woman on the bottom looks like she's tired of his shit. <laughs> Girl. <clears throat> you notice anything? I posted it on my Instagram. He's talking about you notice anything? Look. Is there anything strange about this picture? I'll show you the picture. Matter of fact, just comment, I see it. When you when you see it, just comment, I see it. When you see it. I said, I know. Do y'all see something strange about this picture? Shut your ass up. Somebody said, if you care so goddamn much, jump in the picture, nigga, with her. If you care so goddamn much. <laughs> jump in the picture with her then, fool. If you care so damn much. Um, I said, I know. Picture. Hold on. Shut your ass up. I told you to shut up. I said, I know the woman on the top tells people she has two kids. The woman on the bottom tells people she has three kids. Somebody, okay, let's read some of the comments because that was funny to me. Um, looks like a photo I took with my mom. Shout out to Sydney, the story coach, or Sid, the story coach. Shout out to Sydney. Listen, she says, look at the, looks like a photo I took with my mom and sister on top. My mother was married. So shrugged emoji. Right. I said, all right. Or maybe the daddy is deceased. She said, and, st and statistically speaking, I mean, it's a possibility. I was just coming here to say that. I bet the lady in the in the other picture is tired. Right. I see it. Somebody said, Diva, I was about to say, why don't he hop his ass in the picture if he's so concerned? <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Page TV. Pagey TV. Um, they go. They're going to be going on us. That's so funny. The caption ain't nothing but the truth. Right. Why is it showing double? Somebody said deficiency. No, it's what's the, you know, what is so fucking deficient is when you have a functional human body there, a grown male adult human body there that is functioning and will not function within the fucking system of the household. It's literally like a clock with, with cogs, right? And you have, you're, you have the mother, the father or the other person in the home, and then you have the children. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. The, 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 the cogs are moving. The man's cog is not moving. God damn it. You are useless here. You sit here and you just, that's what I told y'all. Y'all need to make yourselves useful because you're not needed. You're really not. You're not needed. This idea that somebody needs you to do something, you can take care of your children. You don't need to be in the home with me stressing me out, motherfucker. You better go, you better go get you a chiropractor. <laughs> you better go somewhere else with all that bullshit. That's all I'm like, you can't, you cannot shame me about being a solo parent. Man, bitch, I wish I would. I be girl, I was listen, I was in my motherfucking kitchen with my robe on with no drawers on, honey. Winnie the poo out this motherfucker, pouring my goddamn coffee early this morning before my kids woke up. And made coffee for me, okay? Nobody else. I gotta do shit. Went out on my goddamn balcony, relaxed, get some fresh air, listen to the birds, wake up the people. Girl, I ain't gotta worry about nothing. Ain't no eggshells around here, bitch. <laughs> nothing. Girl, make yourself motherfucking useful, and they ain't useful around here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not stressing me out. Stress your, uh uh, no. If y'all want to be close to your kids, let them come live with you. Let them come live with you so you can see what the fuck is happening. You can see how much, how much, it re how much it really takes outside of money, which y'all think always think it's always money, 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 money. No, I have two human beings here with two different personalities. I got to manage those personalities. 
I gotta relate to those two people. I don't have time to baby somebody else. We ain't got no damn. I'm trying to teach them emotional intelligence. I'm trying to teach them how to acknowledge how they feel. Like the other day, I had to ask my son. He has a new friend that he's been going over his house and stuff like that. And um, girl, I just found the girl. <laughs> Anyways, let me tell you. So, so he goes over his friend's house and stuff like that. So this is the second time he's been over his house. Can I go over so and so's house? I said yes, you can. After practice, so they go. He goes over his house. I pick him up after. So on the way home, I was like, so who's this new friend? I said you hang out with him at school. Yes. Is he, does he play basketball? What interests do you and this friend have? He starts naming off the things that they like uh, the same. I said, well, what made you? decide that this was somebody you wanted to be friends with and he started at first he was like i don't know we just friends no you need to tell me why you chose this person to be your friend what is it about him that you like that you want to be friends with that person explain to me use your words damn it explain why you want to be quote in relationship with this new this new friend tell me why when your son it comes to you talking about they like some girl, why do you like her? What do you like about her? Find out why so they can explain and express the reason why. You like so-and-so, why? Girl, look, look at my Keisha, girl. Did you have a margarita? My Keisha had a margarita, girl. Look at her. Fucking bitch. Sit up straight, girl. The people are watching. Sit up straight, girl. The people are, are, are watching you. Don't you want a good review? Girl, you leaning all to the side and stuff. Oh, no, I don't want my computer to go off. Damn it. Yeah, so ask yourself, why, why, do you, why do you like this person? Use your words. I ain't got time to be trying to figure out nobody else. These niggas don't know how to communicate, and they too old to try. You cannot teach an old dog new tricks. That's what I'm saying. Like these conversations all the time, every day, all day about how to relate to these weirdos who have, have, have not changed for generations, girl. Get off the carousel. It's just spinning and spinning and spinning. Don't get dizzy. Unwind your eyes. Get off the carousel and unwind your eyes. So yes, the woman at the top, stress-free. The woman at the bottom, stressed out. Made a mattress and a mule. And like Paige TV said, nigga, if you so concerned, goddamn, jump your ass in the picture. <laughs> That's the best shit I heard all day. God damn it. What else is going on? Let's see. Tired ass, poor ass, raggedy ass, slow Ooh. ass niggas. <sighs> Meet the grams. Aubrey's daddy. Lady, stop hanging out with men anywhere. Some of them will punish you for trusting them. Some of them, some of them know deep down that they are not shit and you have been trained to see the potential and so you give an ain't shit nigga potential he's gonna resent you because he knows deep down inside nobody should have chosen him so he wears you out and terrorizes you because you was the fool to see the potential right right you get it you get it now that's why he doesn't treat you right you're like damn i was trying to help your ass no he resents you for helping him he knows nobody should help him he knows he is a man in a patriarchy and no woman should be helping him nobody he knows it he knows it everybody knows it he knows it but you've been trained to see the potential in these nickels honey and then they get in your space and wear your ass out right we don't want to be wore out anymore. We want to be happy and smiling and free, skipping and hopping and jumping in the park, honey, doing cartwheels in the park, girl. Ain't no eggshells around here, boo. <laughs> Ain't no eggshells. But they get mad at you. They get mad at women for choosing them because they know they ain't shit. Especially the ones who ain't, sh they, 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 and they're not like conventionally attractive, but they have resources. So also women have been trained to go to the person with the resources, right? You go to the person. So if you go to the person with the resources, y'all need to share the person with the resources because the ones without the resources, y'all are giving them access to you and you shouldn't because you, you're working on love. Go for the resources. That's, I mean, if that's, if that's what you choose to do, I would go to the man to the, with the resources and understand like your boy said, who's turning over in his grave. It's been what, two years since, right? Got that motherfucker out of here. You're going to have to share them. That's one thing he said. You're going to have to share. If you're going to 
share it because see when you operate on love and monogamy you you're picking the average joe if you were to actually the way that it's designed to go to the the person with the resources and duplicate his dna then you would have to share them but monogamy is what fucks y'all up right and we're not talking about a non-consensual poly relationship we are talking about a consensual poly type this is the man that's going to we are going to go to this man he has the resources he has the dna we want to duplicate these other dudes this love and monogamy shit is giving too many men access to y'all and then those men are also using this little biblia biblio to um to tell to tell you how they need to show up they tell you you gotta get like uh, you you know what the you know what it is the jig is up but i'm just saying if that's what you choose to do you're gonna have to reconsider the way you want i mean i mean if you say you're monogamous and you want a monogamous person then you can go marry for love and monogamy that's good because then you could just get your average joe i feel like i'm having fucking deja vu right now or you can go i'm literally having deja vu right now Every time I have deja vu, I, I, I like to stop and let it play out so that I can see what the differences are because I feel like deja vu comes up, but then there's a difference. Like, it's just like a glitch, like you've been here before, but there's something different. You know, when the cat walks, the black cat walks by, it's just something different. Yeah, it is. I love when I have deja vu, but it's something that I had, I like I literally intentionally consciously stop what I'm doing and let the scene play out to to make sure to like see or feel if I feel something different. It's a trip, but I was just having deja vu right now as I was moving my hands. I just guess talking about the same thing. Maybe it's just it just makes me move my hands in a certain way. But anyways, yeah, that's what it is, and that's what it was. So let's see, <laughs> that's what it is, and that's what it was, girl. I don't even know what the fuck was happening. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go to the neighborhood talk. Um, okay, we got that. Say what now? RHOA Portia Williams demands Simon pay her $50,000 for divorce attorney fees despite her initiating divorce filing. Girl's a fucking circus. That's a circus. That's what you get. No one. You could have had the same experience with Simon without marrying him. I I truly believe that they thought Portia's notoriety was going to have some kind of pull down to the immigration green card people. I truly believe that to the down to the visa people. Girl, I truly believe that. Because why would you legally attach it? What? Why would you do that? You know how many dummies I want to call Portia right now? I think I think I've called her enough dummies this month. Where are we at? How what how many more days in the month? Cause girl, you's a fucking idiot. You are. And you just be smiling and looking and stuff. And I'll be like, girl, you dumb. It's just, it's a vase. That's it. Still got the tag on the bottom of the feet. It's just a vase. Nothing in it, no water, no, no flowers, nothing, nothing, just a vase. Neighbors, talk about divorce war. Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams Guabadia Stewart, girl, to pay her, she wants her estranged husband to pay her $50,000 for attorney fees. And Simon's attorney in the divorce case is completely against it as much as he is. According to the court documents gained by Radar Online, Portia asked the court for $50,000 from Simon. Her, her lawyer wrote, wife has in, incurred and will continue to in, incur, incurred, incur, wife has incurred and will continue to incur significant attorney fees and expenses of litigation to defend against husband's motion which includes false statements and allegations and requests that the husband be ordered to pay the wife's temporary attorney's fees and the amount of $50,000, given that his actions have called his wife not only to file her request for immediate and emergency relief, but also to respond to this instant motion. 
Simon's, uh, Simon's attorney argues that this court should deny Portia's request for attorney fees because she has failed to provide statutory basis for the request as required under Georgia law. Portia's request for a lump sum award of $50,000 in attorney's fees is not allowed by law. A judge has yet to rule on the matter. Typically, when you marry a scammer and the, and the marriage ends, it typically means the money has ran out. What are you asking for, Dodo? You're dumb. You are dumb. Do you, and the thing is, and Rodney the Voice says it all of the time. Y'all think y'all are smarter than these old ass scamming ass men who have resources. They've been messing with women, see, like Michael Darby and Ashley. Y'all be thinking these young girls are going to get with these old men who have experience, who have been around the block at least 60 times that you're going to somehow get over on him. Honey, when I tell you these niggas are not playing with y'all about, about getting close to their money and they putting it in the paperwork and you so goofy and dumb because you really are just here for the fucking thrill. You're just here for the thrill. Do you, does anybody honestly truly believe all you hashtag love wins weirdos? Did you truly think that Portia Williams from the sum cut video, 265 days of the year, right? The, the railroad, the fucking or underground railroad is an actual railroad that stops underground, bitch, to pick up the motherfucking enslaved people to move them to the north. Where did the train stop to pick them up? No, baby. Did you hear? Phaedra, no, baby, they, it wasn't an actual train. Civil rights activist granddaughter did not know that the fucking Underground Railroad was not a real train. That's why I wonder what, what was D D um, D Dirty Diana's relationship to that family. Because, girl, how in the world? To the point where the, girl, the, the dummy doesn't even think her grandfather, an American civil rights activist, does, she doesn't even think the last name holds as much weight as a Nigerian scammer. And now look at you. And now look at you. She gonna need gold naked hair for real. She gonna need a fucking wig after he he's gonna rip her edges out. Y'all think y'all gonna, did you hear what Fallon got out of the divorce? $50,000. She got $50,000 and a condo, I believe. Did she sell the condo? I don't know. Portia is unsmart. She she really is. I want to read some of the comments. I'm still not over how she posted a video in Dubai with the hashtag be his peace and two days later filed for divorce and shitstorm that ensued since then. The whole marriage was a sham. In my opinion, whoever initiates the a divorce needs to pay the attorney fees. Y'all not posting Cardi's look is super biased. Oh, from the Met Gala. That's what you get when a player meets a coach. The, the man's been a player before she was born. Not even a player, a scammer. A scammer. Women are only with Simon because of his resources. Nothing else. That's it. She was his lover, his secretary, working every day of the week. No, she quit all her goddamn jobs. Yeah. That's your queen. I can't get the pool scene out of my brain. I felt she knew him when I first saw that scene, especially when she stated she don't need a husband that she has to tell him what to do right in front of Fallon. She would have, she, she would have been kicked off my married premises. So I don't feel sorry for her battle with Simon. I'm just watching it play out. She's going to be surprised when he comes for her coin during their divorce and leave her with $20,000 like he did Fallon. Fallon didn't get $200,000. Let me see. Fallon. How do you spell that child's name? Fallon. Pina. Divorce. Fallon Pina gets what from divorce? This is a TikTok. Let's see what it says. Like it. I can't find anything. And I'm not, to, I'm not about to search for it at all. I'm not about to look for it at all. 
that's that's too much time. We've spent too much time on it already. We already know what the deal is with Portia. We know what the deal with, is with Jeannie Mai and GZ. It's like, girl, like what else can come out? Portia, you're a fool. You should not have attached yourself to that man. You should not have quit your jobs, but you are a bitch in survival mode. So there you are. That's what you act like. If you're not one, it's it's weird that you act like one. Drewski and Ruby rolls with a kiss and tongue. No, thank you. Um, I'm it's quiet today. Wingstop must be closed on Mondays. Uh, the game better be quiet. I'm here for it. Zendaya returns to the Met Gala carpet to de to deliver her, her second look of the evening. Both of them were amazing. Shout out to Law Roach. Both of them were amazing. Um, Nicki Minaj looked gorgeous, beautiful. Um, Lizzo looked like a coffee filter. This is Diva Call Me. Okay, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.